Wireshark is a free and open source packet analyzer used for network troubleshooting, analysis, and education. It's a powerful tool that allows you to see the individual packets that make up network traffic, giving you a deep understanding of how data flows across a network. Let's quickly see how you can use Wireshark for packet capture and analysis. So this diagram is a setup we are going to work with. So there's a client, a Windows 11 client, trying to send packets to a web server. And in the middle, I have Wireshark on a laptop that is connected to the same network. So we're going to try and sniff this packet and see what is being sent from the client to the server, especially when it's not encrypted. So first, you need to get Wireshark itself. To download Wireshark, just go to wireshark.org and straightforward, you can scroll down and download for it's on Windows, Mac, as well as uh, Linux. You can get that to Windows, Macs, uh, Mac and Linux. If you're using Kali Linux, then it's it should be pre-installed. But either way, if, if not, you'll be able to download. I already installed Wireshark. It's pretty straightforward. If you are being asked to install any other additional package, then uh, install that as well. But it's pretty straightforward. So let's let's open mine. Where Wireshark. Let's see. So first, the interface you get when you open Wireshark is a list of all the network interfaces that are available on your computer and you have you choose the network that's the interface that you want to monitor you can see i have traffic on most of at least uh, five of my uh, interfaces this is the look back interface the interface that i am interested in is this bridge 100 and that's because it is this bridge this network uh, 192.168.64.0 that's the interface that's so all the computers that are connected to this bridge this interface are on that network and that's what we're going to uh, be trying so wi-fi also i have wi-fi connectivity you can see traffic is going uh, on that but we're interested in this one to start if you double click if you click on an interface it, you, it highlights it but if you double click on it it automatically starts capturing packets on that interface so now on bridge 100 if i double click you see it, it starts getting all the traffic the activity what's happening uh, from source to destination and what have you let's try doing something let's work with this uh, working with this with this so on this client this client is a windows vm where uh, i have it somewhere where's that not this a windows vm um where's that yes 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 so, so this a windows 11 vm on this on this machine let's try to ping the server so if i if I open my terminal, this is an evaluation copy of Windows just so I can test this. So we can just send, we can just try to ping 192.168.64.12. That's the IP address of the server. So uh, that's the IP address of this. So we're here, we're trying to ping here and Wireshark is already monitoring all the packets we have that's been sent or received so now if i hit enter you can see the protocol we'll get to this but you can see the protocol is uh, arp already the source and destination we'll, we'll try and analyze this so this is source to destination from source to destination trying to get what's what's going on so if you want to analyze the packet or go through the packet you just click on the red button here to stop so it's it's going to stop capturing any traffic 
either going to the internet or if you're trying to test something, you would see that there is a lot of output. If there is any uh, IPv6 traffic as well, you're going to see that. So to inspect, let's go, for, let's go up to the, to the top. Generally, it's uh, the time when, when it started capturing, how long it took to get to capture the next one. That's how it goes. And source is the source IP address, destination, where it's going to, MDNS, the, uh, the protocol, then the length, and any other info. So you can update this, the names, the, the IP addresses to, to be more user friendly. So you can put a name for that as long as you know the IP addresses. What I mean by that is to change this to something suitable. So for example, for this IP address, we, since we know this is the client IP address, we can rename this to client. And if we know the default gateway, which should be uh, 192.168.64.1, we can also rename that to say default gateway or any IP. But for now, let's do it. Before you do that, just go to Wireshark, uh, preferences, then come down to name resolution and make sure you check resolve network IP addresses other options can be unchecked but this is what's interesting that's this what we want so resolve this for the client just go to the any ip address you want that's the client or server ip or default gateway ip if you right click on it you can say edit resolve name so let's call this client and click ok so you can see anywhere this ip address IPS is going to show up as client. So at least you know uh, where it's going to. Then let's do that for the default gateway as well. Our default gateway is 64.1. So just right click, edit. Let's call this default gateway. So hit enter. So you click uh, OK. You can see now it's default gateway. It's making it a bit more uh, readable. So we can use a filter to find the second IP address just to complete this to make it more user friendly. So we can use a filter, just come up in filter and IP address. I've typed this for so, but IP address equal double equal sign. Then you specify the IP address of what you're looking for. So 1.168.64.12 is the IP address of that server. So if I hit enter, so you can see it brings out all the places where this IP address appears. So let's call this, since we already know, we can right click on that and edit the resolve name. And let's call this the server. So let's call this server. So it makes it easier. So if we clear, if we clear this, so now it's, it's a bit more, uh, you know, friendly, uh, the display, uh, I mean, so you can see there is a packet sent from the client. It goes to the default gateway first. It's DNS. It's trying to resolve. It's trying to resolve an IP address since it's a DNS. It's using the DNS protocol. So if you scroll down and look for where that IP address of the server appears, which is uh, if I hit enter. So you can see it's this, this, it, this is basically when we tried pinging from the client to the server ICMP. So client to server trying to send ICMP a call uh, request. And then from the server back to the client, we got ICMP uh, reply from, from that server. So if you double click on a particular, on a particular packet, you see, you get more information like the IPv6. Uh, address in this is layer three address or ipv4 address and then ethernet layer two what's the mac address the client and the destination so let's let's go back to close this and clear this filter and now we have we're we're back to so that's that's ping and that's us here intercepting the packets that are being sent from this client to the server. So 
now if we want to capture on encrypted traffic remember i told you we have a web server so this is a client and it's a web server now on the client let's open the browser on this client uh, so i have a wind uh, a browser here so let's try to go to the server which we know the ip address of the server is one in two one six eight dot sixty four dot twelve before i hit enter we can start capturing the packets again so just go to file we can either save this pickup file and maybe export it and send someone if you want or just close but we can just close without saving now the list from the list of interfaces that we have i did mention earlier that the the interface that we are in, interested in capturing the packets on is bridge 100 that's this interface so if we go to bridge 100 and double click it's going to start capturing while it's capturing we'll try to go to the web server if i hit enter now this is the this is the web server this it's a test page for it's a default http server so on the client we are able to see the content of the web server which the server is running here so it's uh, status of the server is running httpd is running on this it's active and running on this uh, linux server so this is in the middle now capturing the packets so if i try to go back just so i show you something it's going to change back to the communication will be client server and it's going to be server client but let's stop here and analyze what we have so stop the idea is to see if we if, if we are going to be able to see any unencrypted traffic between the client and the server and that's i, I used this because let's let's go back where is it i used this because you can see it is not secure this is a web server that i am running i did i did not set up any https any uh, certificates on it so it's not secure so any if it's a form or if it's uh, any website that takes in username and passwords will be able to read the read username and passwords but i will show you that that's uh, possible because we'll be able to read any con all the contents on this uh, web page so the protocol it's using is http so just go to rather than scrolling and you know look for start looking for protocol just use a fil filter so http is the protocol it's not secure yep yeah yeah hit enter so now it we have http traffic packets sent from the client which we know as this machine to the server which we know as the web web server so client to server so it's trying to get a get request so you can right click on this and say follow tcp stream so if i say follow tcp stream we get more information so uh, aside this some of this information we've seen so if you scroll down you start seeing the content of the web page itself if i scroll down let's go down yeah you can see this page is to be used for test proper so this this the content the actual content of the website so in other words if someone was to interfere or to sniff this packet they are going to see where is it where's that windows that windows machine where are you where are you uh, where should where's that yes so you see this page is to be used this is the content of the page actually and then we are able to see that by capturing the packets and that's because the traffic is not encrypted it's not http if the, if that's a form that's how phishing actually works they send you an email to come uh, with, with a link and convince you to click if you do tell they tell you to provide details login details and stuff someone will just sit sniff the packets and analyze take all the information they need they know the browser you're using they know the, your ip address they know any information you type in will be and can be retrieved from uh, from analyzing that so 
to view encrypted uh, traffic for example so now we've seen that you can see traffic that is not encrypted and at least get any information you want from it by specifying what protocol you know http in this case trying to get information from web browser so you can use a filter to say i want tcp like user port tcp tcp port where the port number is 443 so for example 443 is just https so i, I this is just saying i want to see the encrypted you know traffic traffic that is being sent from the client to the server or from the client to the gateway or some other but you're going to see that you can see the different the, the protocol here that is being used and in some cases tls for encryption right and if we try to see apart from tls just any tcp you can see here exactly you see https so even if you open this it's just going to be a bunch of stuff that you will not be able to you know make any useful get any useful information from. at least anything that you can use to you know sniff the, the packets this encrypted and uh, unless you have um, the keys or you know a way to decrypt this normally you wouldn't be able to get any useful information from that so that's uh, on in encrypted and uh, unencrypted traffic and some some filters and another filter you can use is say let's say you are just interested in ipv6 ipv6 uh, traffic or ipv6 addresses so if you type ipv6 in the filter and you you search you go it just brings out any ipv6 you know the address is source destination the protocol that is being used and and everything there are lots of uh, filters yeah, you can use you know in terms of uh, analyzing your your traffic so we create a button for commonly used filters so for example the one we did for secure traffic so is uh, okay I, I already have that created which is uh, this so if i come here and click on this button and say secure it's just going to list all the packets that are you know are secure so we can create a new one just so you see how it's done just go to filter and say for example http right so if we put http then come to the plus sign here and click on plus so i want to call this maybe unsecure for instance just unsecure uh, unsecure packets so if i click on okay you can see it's going to make like a list here and a drop down if i keep increasing so each time i have a packet capture uh, let's clear let's say i have a standard packet capture i can just click on unsecure unsecure traffic that's the button here it's going to bring up http and that's it just go to http and see any http traffic that you want you can specify any filter you want from that and that's it's essentially i would i would just i'll stop here for you know for now but there are a lot more you can do obviously with uh, wireshark but this brief introduction this demo you've seen is something you can try on your own you know try on your own setup your home maybe your home network try try out you know try to capture a packet and uh, analyze it especially if you're troubleshooting anything you know that has to do with uh, either security or network connectivity